Hello, my name is Charles Brookson and I work for a company called AZNB Limited. My panel session is about privacy and security. I define privacy as a right to keep information about yourself from others. It's often thought to include anonymity and confidentiality of your information. There are many other variations of this basic thought. You may wish, for example, to keep your identity private or you may wish information to be only available to your close friends and not to anybody else. You may also wish to move information, or be able to change inaccurate information about yourself. Let us think about the mobile phone. Your operator clearly knows where you are and who you may be calling, but depending on the services you may be using, other people or applications may also know information about you. An example is the location, the contents of the messages you're sending, and the numbers you've dialed. It is truly revealing to look at the privacy messages that you may agree to when you download a particular app to use on your mobile platform. I know, for example, one very common game where everyone has agreed for it to look at the last number you've dialed. I'm still not clear as to why this would be required, or indeed why anybody would agree to it. Another example is a large email provider who inspects all the words of your emails, both sent and received, and targets advertisements at you. Would you say that this is a breach of your freedom, or is it a legitimate use of your information? It's often argued that information can be anonymised, but it's been proved many times, and one can find it many examples of inferring an individual's behaviour from anonymised data. So equally, there must be guidelines for the aggregation of data as well as the collection of it. Naturally, there is a balance between the individual and their right to privacy. For example, if you're a criminal or terrorist, would you have equal rights? Of course, all of this becomes more difficult because one person's terrorist may be another person's friend. This becomes even more interesting when we look at countries. For example, one view, it might be a terrorist from another view, it might be a freedom fighter. People also have the right to have their information forgotten. We do not want our fun or holiday pictures to be taken into account when future employers look at our prospects for a job. So should we have a separation between your identity as a person with, with, from your legitimate personal activities compared to somebody else in a position of power or role? We all have something that we wish to keep private from others. The interesting question is how do we ensure privacy and security in the various services and communications we might be using. I believe that there should be clear guidelines and the language used to offer guidance to the individual. It should be clear to them. In addition, it should be easy to use. There are many examples of services that keep on changing security settings which make it extremely difficult to secure communications and ensure privacy. Services and products should also have adequate controls where privacy and security is built in to protect the individual. For the present, this is not universally true. We need to think carefully to develop clear guidelines and protocols for doing this. And so the panel should have a very interesting debate on the individual's rights to privacy and security and how to balance this against the detection of any illegal activities and from whose view they may be illegal. We only have to think of recent events to realise what a delicate balance this can be.